everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy, back with a new quick win on creating an audio player. So in the past we've talked about media streaming, uh, which is a native plugin that you can install and then stream from a URL or a file, but there's a Cordova native plugin. And today we want to implement a simple audio player using local assets, using a cool library, to generate like a Spotify interface where you can play and forward your songs and you can seek to a position. So let's do this. What I did so far is I created a blank new application and I installed the whole app package. So let me bring this in real quick. This is how it looks like. Um, Holot.js is an audio library for the modern web. So exactly what we need. Default to the web audio API. So working great uh, even on mobile devices um, because Ionic works everywhere the web is. So actually this library is quite extensive. Um, a lot of code examples. Um, simply take a look at it if you want to get closer into it. But for now, we want to dive into our app. So here's my application. And uh, the only thing I did was changing the toolbar and I also already added a few files. So I put them right into the assets folder and created a new MP3 folder. And then I got three sounds from um, a page called, I don't know, Benson was basically the second search result for royalty free sounds. Um, actually, I'm not, oops, sorry. I'm not completely sure if you can hear this, but I'm quite sure. Um, so we will try to play a few of the sounds. I just downloaded like summer beginning creative minds. Um, nothing really fancy. Of course, pick your own if you want to. Also, I create a little interface just to um, look cool. Okay, doesn't have to use it, but it's kind of nice to use some TypeScript every now and then uh, to get more comfortable with it. Okay, so what we need right here is first of all a little iteration. So let's go ahead with an ion list and ion items ng4. Of course, let track of playlist. I think that's what I called this. Is it the playlist? Yeah, that's the playlist. And then um, you can use an ion label in here. You don't have to, but let's use this and then we can use track name. Actually, that's also now a benefit of using the TypeScript interface. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, this is, of course, just the first step. What we want to do is um, we want to store the active item, so the active track of the type track in the beginning null. And then we will set it once we call, um, let's call this start. So we start a track um, and then we will do something. Of course, we also need all the other operations like the toggle, the player, um, pause or unpause. We need to uh, have a next function so we can go to the next track in the playlist. We need a pref function to go, of course, guess what, to the previous one. We want to have a seek function one day. And we also want to update the progress. So um, that's not really the progress, but the duration, but we will display it with an Ionic component. So once we got all of this in place, uh, we can go back here. If we save it right now, uh, we should actually remove this one and then we will already see our three items. And now on click, we want to start them. So therefore simply attach a click event and call start with the current track. So this will start our track. And in here we can now finally use the whole app package. So to use this, we can simply set our own player to uh, new hole. So um, we need to import this. I don't actually know if we can get the auto import. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, that looks actually pretty good. Um, so new hole. And then you can specify a bunch of things in here. The most important, of course, is our source. And this will simply be the path of our track, which we specified right here in the array. Um, actually, we have no player, so let's do this player um, hole and let's also initialize this one with null. So besides the source, um, there are other things, but for now, let's keep it simple. So simply call this dot player, um, no auto completion. That's kind of sad, but anyway, uh, we can call play. 
So now when we click on track, we should actually be able to hear something. Okay. But maybe you can already hear this. Oh, come on. Um, the problem right now is that once we click on an item, it starts, but if we click a new one, it also starts. So whenever we click start, we should check if this player is already set and then call this dot player stop to stop the current track. And also, um, we can now dive more into the functions that we can use. So um, there's an on play callback and there's also an on end callback. So we can use it right here. And on play, we want to keep track of the active track. So let's set our active track to the track we're currently playing. And maybe we will also need a little is playing, um, which we of course set to false in the beginning, but now we set is playing to true. You might have already guessed what for we need this. Uh, so we need to play or pause button and we need to switch it around, which will happen in the toggle player. So let me just bring this snippet in real quickly. If uh, we're calling pause to toggle player, we pause the player and otherwise we call play. And we also keep track of what currently selected in this play. So now uh, we might also add some locks. So um, on play and also on end. And then once we now go into this, I will turn on my sound again, maybe a bit lower. So on play is called. Let's go to the next one. And you see it stops and the next one starts, right? And the same again and again. Okay, but right now we can't really pause or um, stop it. So let's get rid of this and implement our toggle player. And also, um, let's also mark the current uh, item that is playing by using the um, color of the label. So whenever we use these brackets around a variable, normally you see it's like this. But if we put brackets around it, we can evaluate an expression. And in this case, we could check if the uh, track is equal to the active track. And if that's the case, we want to display uh, or use the success color. And otherwise, um, let's use um, the light color. But actually, I think in that case, when we use it like this, uh, we won't see it anymore, right? Um, kind of. But my idea behind the uh, theming here was that we come up with a Spotify-like design. So therefore you can simply target the ion content, the ion list and the ion item, the three things we're using and set the background color to dark. So this will result in a UI <clears throat> that looks a bit more like Spotify. And now we click beginning and this one turns dark. Actually, I don't want to turn it dark. Yeah, I have to spell success correctly and I don't want to hear this all the time, but now we see we got this selection. What you also might notice is that my cursor is not really becoming a real cursor that we get when we click a link. So in order to fix this, simply put button into the ion item, which will then render the ion item like this. So it basically becomes a button that you can click. Looks pretty cool already. Now we can finally move on and implement the audio controls. So therefore I will create an ion footer or footer. I actually don't know how to spell this um, right in here and use toolbar and then craft a little design of rows or actually of columns. So ion column size 12 and also I want to center the text. Previously I always used uh, like uh, I think text center. If you use it like this with a directive, um, this one is deprecated pretty soon. So from now on, use it like ion text center. And then in our row, uh, we could get started by using the active track dot name, first of all, and then using a second column size 12, um, which will hold our um, control to display the uh, progress, um, but we are not yet there. So let's do the other controls first. Um, let's give them also a size of 12. 
and then I will bring in um, a few buttons. So let me copy this in because that's really not really super interesting. So a bunch of buttons. Let's go through each of them. We got one for going previous. Uh, we got one for play. So previous on the left side and next on the right side, which will look like this kind of. Uh, okay. I know what's wrong. Cannot read property name of null. So of course we have to check if we currently have an active track. Otherwise we have no track information and therefore all of this makes no sense. So these buttons are um, only displayed one at a time. So we either got the uh, play button or the pause button depending on if the track is currently playing or not. I, I think I don't have to explain how these items look. Uh, right now it looks pretty pretty bad I would say so uh, let's use text center in here as well and let's give the toolbar also a dark color so then we already see the track name and we see the controls um, we hear the sound and I can pause it because once we call toggle player we already implemented that we call this player pause or this player play so works great now we also want to go forward and backward with those buttons, um, which is actually pretty easy, but we just have to make a little um, if statement there. So if you want to go to the previous one, we have to find out the index of the currently active track. If the index is bigger than zero, we just go one back, uh, one index item back. If we are already at position zero, we have to use the last one of the playlist. Uh, and the same basically for next, just the other way around. Uh, if we're at the end of the playlist, we start the first one and other one just other, well, blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, just the next one. So let's see how this looks and if we can hear it. So a new beginning, we can pause, we can play, we can go to creative minds, we can go to summer, we can go back to a name beginning and we can go back to summer. So. That's how we implement the controls, really easy. Now, the last part is a bit more tricky. Um, for displaying the progress bar, we could use a div and just fill the background color with a percentage, or we could actually use the ion range, which we might want to access as a view child. Um, that was a bling because I should drink something, but I don't have water here, so huge fail for me. The ng model of the ion range, let's set this to a progress variable. I think we haven't initialized this. No, we haven't. So there we go, progress zero. And then also a maximum of 100. So this will of course be a percentage of the duration of the whole clip. The color, let's use success so we get a nice green. And then things become a bit more tricky. The problem here is that we want to drag on the range bar. Perhaps I can now already see it. Uh, that would be kind of great. Um, there we go. So we're of course not updating it or interacting, but of course you want to pull it somewhere and then release it and then get at which value you are. And normally you could use the ion blur, but at the time of writing this, this function, um, it is triggered but it didn't really contain the information uh, we needed. So that was kind of strange. Ion change works, um, but if you use ion change here and you will see that in the uh, update progress function, we will always update the progress and the variable of progress. So therefore on change would be called all the time, which isn't uh, something we can do as well. The only fix I found so far is using um, touch end and mouse up. Basically, um, touch end will be used if we're deploying the app on a mobile device and mouse up is called in my uh, browser preview. So you can use those two. Um, only one of this uh, two will be triggered at any time. So now we can actually seek to a position. And once we do this, um, we end up in the seek function. And in here we can get the value by using um, the range that we can access because we added the uh, hashtag range here 
as a view child. So go ahead, add view child uh, range, and then the range. I think you normally do you put it right there or do you make a space? I'm actually not sure. Hmm. But it's of the tube ion range type, of course, and my auto import. Uh, come on. Ah, okay, I'm on Angular 8, of course, so we have to use static faults. If you're uh, on a lower Angular version, you might not need it, but since Angular 8, you need this. And now in the seek function, we can access this dot range dot value, which is apparently in that function when it is called uh, the value to which we dragged it. So this value can then again be used to set the progress um, by first of all getting the duration of our player. So this dot player duration, which is the duration of the whole clip. And then we can call seek on the player to a specific position. And this will be duration times um, the new value uh, through 100. Okay. So let's see if this kind of works. I think we're missing something. No, actually it works. So we got there. The only problem of course right now is that we're still not updating the progress. So therefore right when we um, call the on play function, we also want to start this start update progress. And in update progress, we want to now um, basically do more or less the same. So we want to get the seek by this dot player. Oops. Uh, this dot player dot seek. And then we will set our own progress to uh, the position of the player divided by this dot player duration, which is of course the whole duration. Um, and then I have to be careful with my brackets, um, multiply everything with 100. So brackets look fine. And then if that's not working, just return not. And this would of course just set the progress once, but we wanna do it every second to update our clip. Uh, or the duration, whatever you want to call it. So we will call update progress uh, every 100 milliseconds. Is this millisecond? I think so. So 1000 would be one second. Actually, we could, actually we could do this to one second to have uh, less updates. But let's give it a try. So we play, and we see it moves. Wow. We can drag it to a position. We can drag it to a position. It's still a bit buggy, might be the case. Um, as I said, I would love to use the Ion Blur event, but it wasn't working. But anyway, um, we now got our player in place. We got the controls in place. We can pause, play. I'm pretty sure you can hear this. So. That's how you implement a simple audio player using the whole JS package. Um, actually, uh, one little thing is to add in here HTML5 true. This was something I had to add because on iOS, once I deployed this, it wasn't working, but with the HTML5, it will use the API and then um, it suddenly works on mobile as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, this quick win on building a simple UI using the footer element, just a few buttons, really simple to implement. The logic is as well uh, quite easy with the whole app package. If you got any questions about playing audio, also check out the streaming audio option. Uh, I will put a link in the description. And of course, I would like to um, see you inside the next video. Give it a like, subscribe, so you get notified about the upcoming videos. And then I will catch you soon. So have a great day and take care.